Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, on this video, I'm gonna take you through kind of how I scouted and hunted uh, a piece of property for, for whitetails here in Nebraska last year. Uh, it's kind of a unique piece of public land. That's kind of why we thought we'd go through it, show you guys what we were looking at and how we went about hunting it. But thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video and any of our other videos, make sure you subscribe because it really helps us out. So if you want to watch some of the hunts that took place on this piece of public land, it's kind of an interesting spot. I think we found the best place to put a tree stand, probably the best place on that small piece of public land. If you go right up here, you can check out uh, some of the hunts that took place on that piece of public land. I'll start by taking you through kind of how we chose this specific piece of public land to start with. Um, in this area of Nebraska, the problem we have with public land is that they're really small. This particular piece that we ended up hunting um, if it was 30 acres, I'd be surprised. So very small pieces of public land. And one of the main things we look for, and we've talked about it before, is that we want these pieces of public land, especially when they're this small, to be well connected to other pieces of public land. So the property being well connected was the main thing that we're looking for in these pieces of public land because they are so small. So we went through and we started looking, using Google Maps, looking at the pieces of public land we had access to. If they weren't well connected, if they're just kind of an isolated block of timber because the properties were so small, we marked them off and we moved on to another one. So the property that we ended up hunting was actually connected to a large piece of public land, but it was separated by two gravel roads and it was only a small section, 30 acres or so. So what that shows us is that it might be an overlooked spot. I mentioned it was well connected. We can check that box off. Private property around it looked really good. We knew there'd be bucks and does moving through. So that's why we chose this property to start with. Is this piece of uh, public land, although being small and along the gravel road, really only had one place to park, kind of right in the middle. You could park off the road to the east as well. So that's why we kind of, we didn't go to that eastern section just based off looking at the maps, that whole eastern half of this piece of public land gone just because of how easy it is to access from other people. If there were bucks on the property, they wouldn't be in that area. So with that, when I got down there in late August to scout, I focused on the western section. I actually started on the south side uh, of the creek and walked the fence line, walked the creek all the way back to the west was my plan. Um, so I ended up going all the way to that western side. I wasn't too, at that point I would seen some tracks and some old rut sign, but it still wasn't sold on the property. So I was about to give up on it, but I found a place to cross that creek. Uh, I got to the other side, and I actually just crossed the creek and was coming up. And it's kind of, swampy isn't the right word, because it really wasn't underwater, but it was kind of uh, native growth, uh, lots, of, lots of thick brush uh, and understory compared to the rest of the area. And just about that time, I was getting close to the fence line and uh, had a doe. I think it was a doe or a buck, actually. I'm not sure. I just seen it get up and run. So now at that point, there's deer bedded on this property. So now I know there's old rut sign, there's fresh tracks, and I just bumped a deer down here in this bedding area. And now I knew I probably wanted to be on the north side of the creek. So now I know I'm going to hunt this area, but now I need to figure out where I'm going to put my tree stand. And so before... I even think about where I'm going to put my tree stand, I need to think about how I'm going to get in and out. This is a really small piece of public land, so if I want to be able to hunt this, I need to be able to get in and out without the deer knowing that I am there. So if you take a look at the map that's up on your screen now, you can see I have highlighted that, that little swampy area that I knew was a bedding area. I walked around in there, obviously bumped that one deer out, and it was a great bedding area. I found a couple more beds in there, so I knew that was a bedding area. And because of that, I need to avoid this area at all costs. And this poses a little bit of a problem because that bedding area is right smack dab in the middle of this teeny tiny property. But I formulated a plan. Uh, you can see the route there on the screen. It's going to park kind of in the middle, southern part of this property. I found a nice place to cross the creek. There's a little bit of a trail there. Um, so I hit that trail, walked the fence line um, on the northern side all the way in. So with any sort of a south wind or a southwest wind, I could walk in. It was thick enough and I would be up top high enough that the deer in that bedding area wouldn't be able to see me. So now comes the important part, where are we gonna put that tree stand? We found our access route, we know we can get in and out without the deer smelling us, which is important on this really small property. It's important anytime, but especially on this really small property. So where are we gonna put that tree stand? 
And if you look real close at the map, and this is one thing that we didn't see when we first looked at the map, but when I was down there, I pulled it up on my phone and I looked at it, that creek runs, you can see it there running east and west, and then right before it gets to the end of the property, it turns and goes north, and then it actually turns, goes back to the east, does a little loop before it exits the property. And then right there, kind of where it, where it loops back, you can see a little bit of an opening there. So this property is gonna be the best when deer are actively moving, when they're rutting, when they're looking for does. So that section there in the very northwest corner acts as a funnel, acts as a pinch point. So if I can set up where any deer that walks through that pinch point is gonna come by my tree stand, that's gonna be a bonus and that's what I'm looking for. So that's what that little, that little corner does for me and that's what I seen on the map that made me say I wanna be in the northwest section of this property is because it would funnel all the deer down because of where that creek is and how that creek interacts with the property. So anything that wants to go from east to west on this property, if they're on the north side of this creek, they have to go through that funnel because they're not gonna be able to cross the creek because of how steep it is. So the reason I went to the northwest corner was because of this pinch point, and pretty much solely because of this pinch point. So if you were to back up away from that pinch point, that gives the deer a lot of other options for them to go and you not be able to see them. So me getting as close as I can to that pinch point means that any deer walking through that area, I'm gonna be able to see or get a shot at. And we're not worrying about the southern side because one, I scouted it and it looked okay, but not as good as the northern side. And we're just kind of, like I mentioned, conceding the fact that if they're on the south side of the creek, let them go, we'll get them a different time. So now we know where we want to be. We want to be by that pinch point. We also know, based on our access, we want a south or a southwest wind so that it doesn't blow into the bedding area when we walk in. So that means we want to be on the northern edge of where we think the deer are going to travel. So that gets a little bit tricky here in this spot because the, the pinch point or the funnel is on the northern side. But the best thing we can do is get as close to that fence line as we can, as close to that ag field as we can, so that we can get a shot before they get to our wind. You can see a little bit of an opening there, right along the creek, and there's a cedar tree right there, and that was right where I put my stand. So that tree stand location sets up perfectly. The deer can't get behind me unless they're out on the ag field, and that's just something we're gonna have to deal with if, if that's the case. But if they're coming from the south, they're coming from the west, um, I'm gonna be able to from that tree stand, I can shoot both those areas. It's a nice open shot, a really nice close 30 yard shot. So that tree stand sets up perfectly. So to kind of sum up how we got to this point, we eliminated the eastern half based on the ease of access for other hunters. We eliminated the south side of the creek based off the sign that we didn't see there and based off all the sign and the deer that we've seen on the northern side. So that's why we're on the northern side. We chose the very northwest corner because of that pinch pointer funnel created by the creek we chose the tree stand and our access route based on the wind that we needed to get around that bedding area and we set that tree stand up so we could hunt it on the same wind that would give us the, grip, the best access. So that will kind of walk you through um, how we scouted this piece of public land, why we picked it in the first place, how we narrowed it down, um, where we chose the tree stand, how we're getting in and out, and so you guys can see if we scouted it appropriately and why we scouted it like we did. So thanks for watching. We hope to do some more of these uh, hunt breakdowns to kind of show you guys a little bit more about where we're hunting and why and why the deer are doing what they're doing on specific properties. Um, but if you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe. Um, it really helps us out. But thanks for watching.